This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1646, Prioritizing Wants versus Needs, and the Unexpected Emergency Funds, both by Philip Dancy of dancywithmoney.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I read to you and to myself, frankly, from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet every single day. Do you have a question you'd like answered here on the show? Go ahead and send it over to finance at oldpodcast.com and you will hear from me soon. Even if your question isn't answered on a Q&A episode, I do my very best to answer every email. And I actually have two posts today. So let's get right to them and start optimizing your life. Prioritizing Wants versus Needs by Philip Dancy of dancywithmoney.com. Manicures, gym memberships, Savage Fenty, new car, Jordans, multiple vacations, professional hairstylist. Depending on who's viewing this list, one may classify these as wants, needs, or even a mix of the two. And that's perfectly okay. We're human and we all want things that bring enjoyment and satisfaction to our lives. However, understanding the difference between the two can be crucial in helping us build or maintain our financial health. So exactly what is the difference between a want and a need? I define the difference this way. A want is an item or experience that brings you a level of satisfaction that you feel you can't live without, but you really can, such as Netflix, going to the bar, or eating out. A need is an item or experience that is essential to your day-to-day life, such as food, water, or a car to get to work. By simple definition, nobody's wants and needs are gonna be the same because everyone has different values. If you were to take a couple minutes to write down your wants and needs and order them by importance, you might shock yourself by discovering what you really value. That need to have a monthly gym membership might be a want if it falls lower on the spectrum of importance. But now that you know the difference, how does this help you? Although there are numerous benefits from separating wants from needs, one of the major ones is that allows you to prioritize your spending. When you prioritize, you're able to get what you really value without taking away from your other financial goals. After you pay yourself first and realize you only have a certain amount of funds left for wants and needs, you can do one of two things. Number one, reallocate or shift things around. You might notice that this month you can live without item and experience A and move it further down the list to get B instead. Number two, Eliminate some wants and or needs. If the priorities at the top can't be moved because they really are that important, consider cutting down on your lower priorities in order to make room for higher ones. Whether it's getting your nails done, hair done, or going on those multiple trips, take a moment to reflect on where it falls on your list. If you practice prioritizing, you will soon discover you can continue getting your most valued wants and needs while still saving for the future it might just take some adjusting or cutting down in other areas. The Unexpected Emergency Funds by Philip Dancy of dancywithmoney.com. $400. According to the Fed's survey of household economics and decision-making, that is the amount of money 40% of Americans cannot come up with in an emergency. Picture this. You go to your routine medical exam thinking your insurance covers everything. However, you get handed a $500 bill that you cannot afford. A lot of people will place the bill on their credit card with 18% APR or even get a payday loan knowing they have other financial obligations to take care of. In return, the individual spirals into a debt cycle that they can't seem to get out of. Although this is an extreme example, this happens every day and could even happen to you if you're not prepared. Now I know that stat might have some of you shook, but there's one thing everybody can have in order to help prevent something like this from happening, an emergency fund. An emergency fund is an account for money set aside for those unexpected scenarios, including losing your job, medical bills, or car repairs. And no, you shouldn't use your emergency savings for that trip you didn't budget for or those new pair of Jordans that just dropped the other day. Many personal finance experts usually suggest having a standard three to six months worth of expenses saved. 
Whether you have the standard or just $1,000, there are a few benefits that come with having a healthy emergency savings. It creates a cushion for your finances by having additional funds during times of need. It decreases the likelihood of taking on unnecessary debt. By taking on unnecessary debt, there's a big chance you may fall into the debt cycle. You can live your best life. You don't have to cancel your planned trips just because of an unexpected expense. So where do we start? Rome wasn't built overnight, so don't drive yourself crazy trying to get three to six months worth of expenses saved. It took me almost two years to get my emergency savings to six months. First, set a goal to reach $1,000 and then go from there. Next, in order to help keep yourself accountable, do the following two things. Use a separate savings away from your day-to-day bank, dedicated for emergencies and automate the transfers. Doing this will help with temptation and you'll be saving without lifting a finger. Now that we know the importance of having an emergency savings, let's get started. You just listened to the post titled Prioritizing Wants versus Needs and The Unexpected Emergency Funds, both by Philip Dancy of dancywithmoney.com. Deciding if something is a want or a need is such a personal thing. But I think the thing that helps the most is actually stopping to think about it. Much of our spending is just mindless. We're not considering wants versus needs because we're running on autopilot. So simply pausing and thinking about it can make a huge difference. And when you realize that something is a want that is outside your budget, you might be able to console yourself by finding a greater want. I had a friend back in New York City who was a fitness fanatic and also a ninja when it came to saving and investing. Whether she was talking about healthy eating and exercise or money decisions, she would always use the phrase, find a greater want. I would think of this when my alarm would go off at 6 a.m. and I wanted to sleep in rather than go to the gym. I would remind myself that as much as I wanted to stay in my warm bed, I wanted the benefits of exercise much more. I was able to find the greater want when I was making a decision in that moment, and it made it much easier to get out of bed. Now, the second article here talks about the importance of emergency funds for things like unexpected medical bills, and I wholeheartedly agree. But I wanna point out that when it comes to medical bills specifically, Having the ability to pay that bill addresses one part of the issue. Did you know that medical billing fraud is an $80 billion problem? Healthcare is the only thing we pay for where we have no idea how much it could cost before we get the bill. But it is possible for us to be better consumers of healthcare. Check out the Economy Conference YouTube channel for a video titled Planning for Healthcare Costs While Pursuing FI. In this video, I interview a nurse practitioner named Angel Solucci, who helps people ensure they are receiving medically necessary treatment at fair and reasonable prices. This video is a sneak peek at a talk she'll be doing for us this November at the University of Cincinnati. Tickets are available at economyconference.com. And remember that economy is spelled with an M-E, not an M-Y. Because, well, just because. And don't forget to use code OFD in all caps for a 10% discount. Have a great rest of your day and I'll be back tomorrow reading to you where your optimal life awaits.